God, tell me what's wrong. Hello dear friend and welcome. Agnetha Faltzkog, Bjorn Ulvius, Benny Anderson, and Frederick Lingstad, together, these four extremely talented artists brought to life a worldwide pop band. Perhaps extravagant, even cheesy, they were dedicated and perfectionists. However, the talented individuals were charismatic people who could establish a genuine emotional connection with their audience. Yet, behind this magical formula for success, there was a crucial fifth member, a businessman with genius and sharp vision. He transformed the young artists into a global sensation. Let's trace the extraordinary path of Stig Anderson, a visionary who believed in the potential of this forming group from the beginning. Stig Anderson was considered the fifth member of ABBA, inseparable from the band for decades. Besides managing the light, he played a fundamental role in shaping the group. He was also the founder of the record labels and production companies with which ABBA signed. He wrote many important song lyrics and guided them to worldwide success and unimaginable wealth. Born to Stig Anderson and an absent father, Stig's childhood was marked by extreme poverty. Despite the challenges, when Stig was five, his mother managed to buy an old gramophone and 678 RPM records. Stig felt an immediate connection to music. He sang the era's hits, discovering his love for performing in front of people. As a teenager, his mother bought him a cheap guitar, and occasionally, he gave small local performances. At 16, Stig realized that writing his own songs would be a more interesting and enjoyable challenge. This led to, Tide Shambo, recorded in 1951, becoming the first of his songs and an accordion classic. Although achieving some recognition as a composer and performer, Stig also worked as a math and chemistry teacher in a primary school to support his family. His first significant success came in 1958 when the legendary Swedish football hero Nils Lidholm recorded his composition. In 1959, another success came with the song, Ard Sherry Manor Clora, gracefully performed by the singer Lil Bees. Stig became one of Sweden's most productive composers in the 1960s, with over 3,000 published titles. In 1960, Stig founded his own publishing company, Aiden Music, and three years later, he co-founded the record label Polar Music with his best friend Bengt Bernhag. Their first signing was a group called the Renani Singers, where one of the members was an 18-year-old Bjorn, the same Bjorn we now know. This is where things get interesting. Bjorn was friends with a guy who also had a band, Benny Anderson from the Hep Stars. Encouraged by Stig, they started composing songs together and writing hits for Swedish musical groups. Over time, the Renani singers and the Hep Stars disbanded, but Bjorn and Benny enjoyed working together. Many of their collaborations resulted in guaranteed success when performed by other artists. By the end of 1969, Bjorn and Benny were living together in Stockholm, and Stig's vision of an international market began to notice their potential. This was the original format envisioned by Stig, who, as a businessman, realized that a romantic and passionate quartet might be too dull for the pop world. With Bjorn's insistence and enthusiasm, the quartet performed with the girls at the center of the stage, receiving overwhelming popularity. In the fall of 1971, the guys became official producers of Polar Music, strengthening their partnership with Stig, especially in songwriting. Thanks to the small contribution of the women, especially with, People Need Love, commonly called ABBA's first song, success spread across Scandinavia. Contrary to Stig's initial instinct, the magic formula was being discovered. Two extremely talented musicians and excellent composers, an experienced lyricist, and two rising female vocalists with impressive voices added more sparkle to the band. From this point on, it was decided that the women would sing all the songs with their voices. The band still didn't have a name in 1972 when they were working on their first album released in March 1973, credited as Bjorn and Benny, Agnetha and Frida. This album provided a direction for the group, trying to go further despite its peculiar mix, including material rooted in folk traditions. 
It topped the charts in Belgium, Norway, the Netherlands, and South Africa. Naming the group after each member didn't seem very interesting, so Stig realized they needed a simpler name. One day, playing with the initials of their names, he came up with ABBA. The group found it strange because ABBA was also the name of a well-known Swedish company producing canned fish. The company agreed to let them use the name, and everyone agreed it sounded much better. Throughout his entire career, Stig built an extensive network of contacts within the music and publishing industry, both in Europe and the United States. By the time ABBA won the Eurovision Festival in 1974, he had a well-prepared sales strategy. Much of what ABBA became can be attributed to Stig Anderson, who effectively utilized his energy and ambition to produce, manage careers, write song lyrics, and represent commercial interests through record contracts. As ABBA's international success grew, Stig became fully occupied, making it increasingly challenging to participate in songwriting. Simultaneously, Sweden music evolved into a publishing empire, acquiring many leading Swedish publishers. When discussing Stig Andersson, we're not only talking about a complete music man but also an entrepreneur with vast knowledge and influence in the music industry. In 1989, after Polar was acquired by Polygram, ABBA discovered they hadn't received the higher royalty rate they believed they had agreed upon. It was revealed that Stig used recording contracts to secure a percentage of profits over many years. In June 1990, ABBA filed a lawsuit against Polygram. Stig's daughter, Mary, stated that her father wanted to go to court because he believed he was right and Benny and Bjorn were wrong. However, the case never went to court, Polygram paid 5 million Swedish crowns in overdue payments, and the terms of the agreement were undisclosed. According to Mary, her father was very restless and couldn't stay still, everything had to happen quickly. His temperament was marked by intensity, dedication, and an unrelenting pursuit of success. His demanding attitude and control over all aspects of his protégé's careers were distinctive traits of his personality. While this approach may have led to conflicts and tensions at times, it also significantly contributed to the lasting success of artists like ABBA and his influence on the international pop music scene. Stig's devotion to his work led to a spiral of exhaustion and stress that gradually undermined his health as legal proceedings and tensions between him and the group members grew. What was once a strong friendship collapsed, leaving him with a void that would never be filled. According to the Swedish site Sens, Stig sought refuge in alcohol to alleviate his anxieties and isolation. However, this escape became a vicious cycle, leading to increasingly intense struggles with alcohol. On September 12, 1997, at the age of 66, Stig suffered a heart attack, marking the day we bid farewell to a giant in the music industry. Stig Andersson was undoubtedly one of the pillars of Swedish music, but on the other hand, he was a soul tormented by self-imposed pressure, whose love for music and the pursuit of extraordinary results consumed him. His dedication to work was unparalleled, understanding that success would not be achieved without effort and determination. Stig Andersson wished to establish a Nobel Prize in music in contrast to the Literature Prize, but the Foundation refused, citing its statutes. Instead, he founded his own Polar Music Prize in 1992, which over the years became the most prestigious music award. Today, we celebrate and honor this great artist and entrepreneur whose work and songs continue to endure in the hearts and memories of music lovers worldwide. If you enjoy this type of content, consider subscribing to our channel. A big hug, and until the next video. Tita, tell me what's wrong.